to talk about how to survive a real Canadian winter. I feel like there's a lot of people on YouTube that showcase like winter van life or anything like that or RV living and they're living somewhere like Vancouver Island or something which if you ask me what they deal with mostly is probably moisture because it's such a wet environment down there where up here we deal with utterly horrible cold and basically snow that keeps us from being able to access that country for about six months of the year. So I would say I live on what would be called like the cusp of northern Alberta and usually our average temperatures in the winter are between minus 15 Celsius to about minus 25 Celsius and that's just our basically our daily this last winter we had it much easier, like even right now it's about minus 15. So we're, I'm just at Canadian Tire now getting water and then uh, we're gonna go park somewhere and we'll talk about this. I'll give you guys my experience on what I did to basically survive uh, an actual Canadian winter and what's actually going to help you and get you through like minus 40 and stuff and what you should do in this case if you're stuck living out here for winter in a van, RV, or truck camper. Right? <laughs> So I think my first piece of advice for surviving a real Canadian winter, like minus 20 consistently and beyond that, is have a backup plan. You're, if it's your first winter and you hit minus 40, you're gonna have issues. You probably went into it thinking you're not going to. You went through and did all your research, got to all your ducks in a row, and then everything just goes wrong. And I mean, maybe you, Maybe you luck out and you don't have any issues, but you should still have a backup plan. Like if all of a sudden your heater fails, you have no time to fix it. You need to have money put away so you can go get a hotel room, go somewhere warm, get your ducks in a row, or even staying at a friend's house or something like that. Somewhere you can be warm and be able to go outside and like work on your issue. That's my first piece of advice. Now, my next piece of advice is uh, kind of an obvious one, but maybe not to everyone a buddy heater or something like that like a catalytic heater or anything like that that's not going to cut it out here you need to either have an actual it needs to be a forced air uh type of heater so basically air being blown over a heat exchanger a propane furnace like this one or a diesel heater and my advice is if you're running water in the camper um even if you're not, I find it's, it's easier to maintain the heat in these rather than turning it off for the day and then coming back and having to turn it on and trying to reheat the whole thing. So if you turn it down during the day, that's fine. But if you have water inside the camper, you're just gonna wanna go ahead and turn that heater on in sometime in November when it starts getting cold and you should be safe to turn it off sometime in May. Yeah, you're gonna have that thing running the whole time. So make sure you have a big enough battery bank and a good way of charging that battery bank consistently. Solar's not gonna cut it out here. You're gonna need either a generator, shore power, or a DC to DC charger. Even that's hard. Your best bet's probably gonna be a generator out here or shore power. Um, dependent on your battery bank too, but uh, yeah, that's, that's just kind of the way of life out here. We don't get much sun in the winter. 
Like right now, I it's now March and we're finally getting enough sun that I'm able to charge my batteries during the day. Um, but once December hit, like from December till March, it's basically solar's useless. So the other thing I guess to talk about for like uh, propane appliances, if you have a water heater, yes, while you're driving, turn it off. Um, your water heater will hold heat for quite a while without being turned on. But if you're at work for the day or something, I would definitely uh, have it on. So yeah, you should be okay with still while driving for a couple hours. So I'm gonna say another great thing to think about, the fuel you use for your heaters, if you're using propane or if you're using diesel, I guess gas too, but I think gas you're gonna have the least amount of issues with at that temperature. There's not really a gelling issue. So if you have like, let's say a gas van, and you want to tap into the fuel tank on it, that's probably your best bet and you're gonna have the least issues ever with that heater. So it gets a little finicky with diesel and propane. Propane, the solution for that is... Okay, so what I do with my propane is, as you can see, it frosts up. It's only zero degrees outside right now, but it's still frosting on there. And that's because basically reactions I have no idea what the science is to it, but at certain temperature, it starts to become a, basically it stops being able to pressurize anymore. And so you don't get any more propane in your lines and it's just really hard, but you still actually have propane in there. So how you mitigate that is using one of these. All this is, is basically, it's for putting on like an oil pan and uh, just heating it like a block heater. But uh, what I use it for is I just go like that, plug it into short power, or if you have a really big battery bank, you could just plug it right into your battery bank. It uses 200 watts though, so be aware. And now I don't usually use this until it's about minus 30. At minus 30, I'm either parked at a campground or I'm using my generator. Um, but most likely parked at a campground just because that makes life easier. And I would advise you guys, like there's campgrounds uh, out here that are open in the winter all the time. Just about every town has one. Um, yeah, you might pay 35 bucks a night for like, for, for a week, but you'll be okay. And it'll save you a lot of hassle and a lot of these problems won't happen if you're just plugged in. And yeah, then you can use something like this. It'll keep your propane uh, good and yeah. Also using this, it'll uh, basically, this compartment holds two tanks. It'll actually, it's enough that if I have it in the middle, it'll heat up both tanks and I don't even have to worry about switching it over to each tank. So yeah, if it's zero degrees Celsius outside, don't use this because you don't want to start pressurizing the tank even more. I advise only using this when it's uh, like beyond minus 20 degrees Celsius. I guess that leaves us to diesel heaters. So your issue with a diesel heater is probably going to be gelling at those temperatures. Um, for the most part, our fuel, you don't have to worry about gelling until about beyond minus 40. Um, now with the little fuel lines on the diesel heaters, you might have to worry. So I would keep some additive with you, but uh, our fuel up here in Canada, at least way out north here, they already have an additive in it when you buy it from the station. And that's why I, I all winter, I've never put a fuel additive in this truck for gelling. Our fuel here does not require you to have to do that. Um, it's literally a waste of money buying the stuff if you're just throwing it into your truck because you think your fuel is gonna gel. I've never had an issue. I think all three diesels I've owned, none of them have ever had an issue running at minus 40, so long as you had them plugged in. It's kind of pretty here, you know that? I do like this spot. You see it right out, yeah, right there. That's actually our sled trail for, uh, and uh, they haven't got much use out of it this year. I think there was one or two time, one time they got the groomer on there. Yeah, that was about it. Yeah, it's been a sad winter. Uh, so my other thing I would say is 
monitor temperatures. I'm just, I'm gonna explain my case here. So, or let's say you have a van and under your bed is like a garage space. Um, your heater's not in there and you don't have any venting from inside the cab into there, but your battery system's in there. That area is going to get very cold and your batteries may fail. If you have lithium, your batteries may fail at least. Um, if you had lead acid, you're good to go. <laughs> um, but I will say lead acid will run less efficient at uh, those temperatures. So your best bet is to get temp sensors and put them in different parts of your van or camper that you think might get cold. Um, and usually your first like night of uh, minus 15, you're gonna know pretty quick like what's the temperature outside and what's the temperature inside in those places. And that's going to tell you if you need to do anything to get those areas warmer if you need to. See with mine, I have them in by all of my like water tanks, uh, my gray tank, my black tank. And then I ended up putting another sensor just in behind uh, up where my gray tank is. And that was probably the spot that would have been the hardest to actually heat because it's in like the corner where, yeah, nothing's getting to it. And after I realized that, I soon found out that if, the, if I'm not moving around or anything, um, and I'm just parked in one spot, my furnace will sufficiently keep those areas warm to about minus 30. And then after that, it gets iffy. Once again, minus 30 Celsius. So once I realized that, I, whenever I started uh, seeing that it was gonna be about minus 20 outside, and there was potential to get beyond minus 30. I just said, okay, dump my tanks before it starts getting that cold. Cause you don't want to have to try to dump it at minus 20 because those valves where you dump your tanks from might actually freeze up. You dump your tanks beforehand. And then what you do is you make sure you can, well, I would just winterize. Um, what I have in my water, Beside my water tank is there's a three-way valve and basically I flip it and then it goes to a suction hose. I then stick the suction hose into the RV antifreeze and then turn on the pump. It pumps from the RV antifreeze and then I just go open all the taps in my camper and that's how I winterize my truck camper. And I can do it all from inside when it's warm. The only thing I have, whoa, I almost slipped. The only thing I have to do outside is dump the tanks, which uh, you're going to want to do before it gets super cold. You don't want to do that in minus 20. Shoot, even minus 15 sucks. So I touched on this a little bit earlier, but... Uh, there's no shame in getting a campsite. If it's gonna be like minus 30 degrees Celsius, there's no shame in just going and getting a campsite for the night and being able just to plug in. By all means, you can do this off grid too. It's just a lot more steps to it. And if you're kind of in the middle of nowhere and things go wrong, you don't wanna be walking out of the back country in minus 30. Especially out here, like, yeah, there's a lot of things out there that want to eat you. <laughs> now, if you're wondering, well, campgrounds aren't open in the winter. Surprisingly, quite a few are. Um, so I think just about every town I've went to uh, traveling, they've had campgrounds open that are seasonal. Well, not, se no. So just about like every town around here that, uh, has like 10,000 people usually have like one or two campgrounds that uh, people actually live at all year round. Um, I am in like Northern Alberta. It's actually more central Alberta, but central Alberta, if you look at it right, we're pretty, it's pretty far North. So that being said, like if you're thinking at uh, coming out here and 
if you're doing this out here and you think you're not going to be able to like spend the to get a campsite if things go wrong or something that's just not true like I'm I can call up uh, one of the campgrounds right now and get a site for 35 bucks a night and I'll have full hookups actually even the one uh, it was minus 30 and I went there uh, for the first time they had water running water still right at your campsite which is just bonkers the other one they don't do that they uh, he goes around and he just hauls water to you that he keeps in a garage in a big tank but uh, yeah, this other one. So if you wanted to, um, you could literally go there, park, fill your water tank, and then dump your tanks too. Uh, it's just, it's such an easier way to deal with this stuff. If like stuff goes wrong and you're able to be plugged in, you have electric heat. Um, I would keep an electric heater with you uh, for minus 40 because that is a nice supplement in an RV. My propane heater will do it too. It's just uh, if you're in a bigger rig and you might be having more issues trying to heat your rig than with just uh, one heater. So having a, having a electric heat with unlimited fuel basically makes life a lot easier. The other thing too with these campgrounds is you're able to plug in your vehicle and that's nice too. Like you're able to plug in and not have to worry about it. Which I mean, for like 35 bucks a night, for when we get like minus 30 or anything out here, it's usually for about a week and then it's gone and we're back down to our usual like minus 15 to minus 20 range. And that's a lot more manageable. Your diesel truck will start no problem in minus 20. Um, minus 30 is iffy and hard on it you just don't want to do that even a gas truck you don't really want to do that you want to just have it plugged in so it is nice to be able to plug in it's nice to just be able to kind of have people around in case something goes wrong let's finish this off on a high note you are living in a van rv whatever it's got wheels it's got a motor and it's got a positive attitude, hopefully. Your best bet is going to be leaving. Leave all of this cold and go somewhere warmer. That'll make life a lot easier and a lot more manageable. Um, you'll save money on fuel because you're not gonna be dumping money into like if you think you're going to come out here and run your diesel heater on low all year you got another thing coming you're probably like unless you're in a really small rig but if you are in something like well even like this truck camper and you're trying to heat the basement and the main cabin with just a diesel heater just one and it's minus 40 outside i don't think one's gonna cut it and if you have two going, you're gonna just start pumping through fuel. So honestly, I think your best bet is just go somewhere warmer. Um, I know, I know, I know. Same reason I couldn't leave is because I needed money and this was a good job to be at to save money. So I stayed and I battled through it. I also just wanted to see if I could do it. My next winter, I'm not putting myself through this again. It's not glamorous to have to deal with like finding dump stations and hoping they're not frozen over. Hopefully you can find water because uh, everywhere's water's turned off. Like I was very fortunate that I knew of people with shops that had indoor water taps that I could just get water at. Like, honestly, I think I think if I wasn't able to get water all year, I would have probably left. Well, no, because I what I would have done was I would have just got a campsite once a week and I would have just put that into my budget. It's not a huge deal. It's 35 bucks, but you could, and then I could just get water for the entire week, dump my tanks there, everything like that. Like that stuff, it's all, it, this is very manageable. It's harder than it needs to be. And I really think that like, 
like I'll probably be going, I don't think, I won't be going to the States for next winter, but I'll be probably lower mainland in BC and just deal with rain, which I think, well, and I was down there and I'd rather Matt deal with rain than have to deal with uh, minus 40 again. That's just not fun. The other thing too is like trying to find anywhere to park here in the middle of winter is can be hard. I lucked out this year because we didn't get much snow. I understand if you have a reason that you have to stay here, that you can't just go and up and leave to somewhere warmer. I get that. I basically went through that for like the last few months here. So if you do have to stay here, I really hope all these tips I gave you and my experiences with this um, help you out and you're prepared for next year because we could get a lot worse of a winter next year. Who knows? But yeah, I want to thank you all for hanging out with me today. And I'm glad I got to share some tips with you guys about surviving our Canadian winters. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.